Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on your time of day. I have with me today Honoré Porter. She is a strategic book author, author of 53 best-selling books with worldwide sales of $4 million. Also on a few talk shows as well. You can see her, her listen to her on iHeartRadio about innovators and author and taking action, abundance for authors and taking action with Honor Ray. If you go on to Amazon, you can see that she has done the Miracle Morning series as well as a successful single mom series. So Honor Ray, how about a little background information on you and where and how did all this get started? Oh gosh, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here with you today. Um, I started as um, as an entrepreneur in my 20s, I had a, a successful uh, business with Shackley Corporation. And then out of that, I got a business coach and then I became a business coach and then I became a speaker. And then of course, the differentiator for any coach or speaker to, uh, to differentiate, differentiate themselves to, uh, with other um, coaches and speakers is to write a book. And so I was given the advice to write a book by Mark Victor Hansen, who everyone would know is the co-creator of the Chicken Soup series. And I wrote a book and I was hooked and got the fever uh, and just have, have continued to write books. And now what I mostly do is help people to write books and become authors. And you've created your own successful publishing company in the process. Yes, yes, I have my own publishing company and that's one of the things I recommend that people do is when they're publishing their own books, they establish their own publishing company to hold all of that IP and collect all of those royalties and income. So how do you help people when you're going about it and they wanna write a book, they, they come to you and you take them through the entire process? I do have a level of that, yes. I have a course for uh, folks who want to learn the process and learn the psychology behind the process and have access to um, insight and information and tools and folks that can help them in the process, such as editors or graphic designers, right? Um, and then I also have a couple of options where people who have more time than or have more money than time will pay me to handle that on their behalf, including engaging a ghostwriter and all of the other team members in the publishing process. Excellent. So on the with with the ghostwriter, you help them just make their words so that they're more legible. I know when I wrote my book, I did that same thing is that I can put words down in a book, but to make them legible that people want to read, it takes a little bit of expertise and you have people that can that can help them with that. I do. So someone who does not fancy themselves a writer would use a ghostwriter, would delegate that entire process to a ghostwriter. The next level um, would be where someone writes their book, but they don't feel confident in the content or the structure or how those sentences are being written. And so they would use the services of a developmental editor or content editor. And then once you've you've got a manuscript, regardless of who wrote it, it needs to go through editing, at least one round of editing, uh, and then a round of proofreading to make sure that it's a clean read for the reader. People really do notice that stuff. <laughs> so it has to be good. That's amazing. Yeah. And then how about putting the book cover on? How, how do you go about determining what's the best, you know, cover for the book that'll get people's attention? That is an art and a science all combined. I have a process that I've put together over the years of, of figuring out how to get a book cover that compels someone to want to learn more about it, especially now that we live in an age where they're seeing a book cover on just a portion of their phone, right? When you look at a book cover on Amazon on your phone, it's so incredibly tiny. So it has to fit into the genre and it also has to stand out and be compelling, which there's a, a process to picking a title and a subtitle as well, right? So the artwork has to be good, the, the image has to be clear, and it has to compel someone to want to tap on it, and blow it up and see it bigger, and then flip it over and read about the book to see if it's the right book for them, right? So it's a process of, of figuring out what uh, shelf it would go on in the bookstore or what page it's going to go on on Amazon or iBooks or Barnes and Noble as people are perusing they're really going to notice a clean clear book cover that looks amazing and they're going to disregard 
unconsciously the book covers that don't get their attention right so if the co it's if it's muddy or it doesn't look good or it looks self-published right if it looks like you did it in a weekend then people are going to pass it by and you have a micro millisecond to get someone's attention and so that is really um an important piece of the process is making sure that you're putting it on the right shelf. And when you put it on the right shelf, that it looks good next to the books on either side of you. It looks like it fits in there and actually um, stands out, right? So that it 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 compels someone to to pick it up and say, this is the this is not only a book I need to read, but this is the next book I need to to start reading. In fact, I might stop reading the books that I've been reading and start reading this one because it looks amazing. So, yeah, you've done that with yours. I was just looking through them; they just pop right out. It's just, I'm not a single mom, or you know, even a successful single mom, of course. But I just look at that and it's like, wow. I mean, I'm looking at those book covers, saying that looks interesting. I might just, you know, pick that one up and thumb through that myself, even though I'm not a single mom. So you do that all yourself, or do you have people that yeah. that help you, or how did you figure all that part out? Well, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a graphic designer. Although with lots of books under my belt, I certainly have an eye for what works, right? And so when I'm looking at other books in a genre, I'm providing direction to my designer. I'm saying th these are the books that are in this genre and the book cover needs to fit in here. And so we're looking at colors, we're looking at font, those sorts of things. But then that's where, that's where I end <laughs> and the designer begins because I'm just not a graphic designer. So I wouldn't know the first thing about in design or Photoshop or any of those things, right? So that's where I have valuable team members who are educated and are creative in that way and can take the book cover and really make it fit into what the promise of the book is, right? To help people to really understand that this is something that they need to pick up. Got it. And now, so they've written the book, you've got the book cover, you help them publish and you do all this. For people, so if people want to build their I brand, do. build a book, do. you'll do it all. Yes. Now the book has yes. to go out there and has to be read and picked up. How do you how do you help those people yes. at that point get everything done and and get people to read it and build their business? Well, so here's the interesting part, Gregory, and, and this is this doesn't happen in the order that you just said it. Although most people think that it does, so they think I write the book, I pick the book cover, I publish the book. Now it's time for marketing, but actually the marketing starts in my world with the blank page because we want to bake the marketing into the book. We want to be leading people down a path of, hey, if you're a do it yourselfer, then we have put stuff in this book to really help you. The information and insights and tools contained in this book can really help you. So if you want to do it yourself, like in my book, you must write a book. If someone wants to write and publish a book, they can read you must write a book and that'll get them 85 or 90 percent of the way there but the difference is for most people is that some is that everybody needs a little bit more information because everyone's uh, situation is specific and unique right so i can give general advice here are things to avoid here are things you want to make sure you do those sorts of tips right inside the book but when i'm talking to you i would say what is your business? How do people find you? What are success stories that you have helped people to achieve? What is pain you have helped them avoid by working with you? And those nuggets would go into the manuscript. So when you're putting together your book, you have to think, well, you don't have to do anything, but my recommendation is that you think 10 years down the road, right? And bigger picture, like where does the book fit into your business and how do you attract people to your business with the contents of your book how do you say here's how i find um a a client and then how do i help that client what am i helping them to do am i helping them to avoid pain or gain pleasure or both and then how do i communicate that in a way that isn't salesy or obnoxious or repetitive or annoying right so that they want to reach out and say i have questions what other levels of uh, services do you offer, right? right? And this is true for any professional, whether you are a dog groomer or a real estate agent or broker 
or you're a coach or a speaker, you're serving people and your book is meant to serve people and to let them know that you have other ways to serve them that make them want to reach out to you and say, yeah, I want to learn more about that. I want to learn more about the course that you offer or the consulting or the coaching or the speaking because by the time someone's read all the way through your book, if they do, they probably like you. I don't think I read all the way through a book where I'm thinking, I just really don't like this author. <laughs> right? This is terrible. I hate this. Right? So, so if someone picks up your book, so if you've done the cover well, you've done the title and the subtitle well, and you've done the book description and they pick it up and they start to read it, if they've heard you on a podcast or they've seen you on stage or you've worked with them, or not, right? So this could be someone handing them a book. They're gonna get a sense of your voice, your education, your experience, your authority, and also your sense of humor, right? All baked into your book. And so then that goes to creating that relationship with the reader outside of the book. So all of that happens in my mind when we're starting with a blank page, thinking about with the end in mind, what do I want a reader to do from reading my book? I want you to write a book. What do I want a reader to not do after reading my book? I don't want them to write a crappy book that doesn't sell, right? And then I want the right reader to say, I think you might be the person to help me. And that's what every author wants, right? You don't want to just have someone read your book, put it down and go, okay, that's, you know, that's nice. I get to check a box. I read a book. I can put it on Facebook right? You want them to feel like they've started a relationship with you, like they know you and they want to get to know you better. And they might want to engage you in what it is you do for a living. Perfect. So when somebody comes to you, they're looking to write a book, you're already thinking way down the line on that and helping them say, okay, let's put some stories together. Let's, let's reach out, talk to that one yes. person. And then everything else will kind of fall into place as part of the writing goes towards the end. And then getting people. Correct. Yes. Good. Good. And you've been doing this yes. for quite some time now and done quite a few of them. So obviously you're very successful at, at what you've done. That's. Yes. I, 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 I enjoy it very much. It's my favorite thing. It's give. I went to take an author, his books yesterday. I got the proofs of the book and I went to deliver the proofs of the book. And it was so great because knocking on the door, right? He said, oh, you just happened to be out at this hour of the morning. And I said, well, no, <laughs> you live here. <laughs> I wanted you to have these as soon as possible, like after the sun was up. Wow. So quite service. Yeah. Yes. Well, if I can, uh, I deliver those books. Uh, that very, very rarely does that happen. Most of my clients, I never even get to meet in person. Um, but this one happens to live about 20 minutes for me. So I was able to deliver that book in person, which is, which was such a pleasure. Yes. That is. So not all books just, do they always go out on Amazon right away? And then later on they get into hard, hard print or hard, hardbound or paperback books. Uh, how does all that work? Oh, sure. So Amazon actually has print on demand options as well. So we usually simultaneously publish the ebook and then the hard version. So either a paperback, a hardcover or both, and then also an audio book if that's what the author wants. And it all, I get the lawyer answer all the time. Like, how does this, all of this work? Well, it depends, right? The lawyer answer is, well, it depends. It depends on whether the author is looking to generate business just in their zip code or their area. Like if they serve a county, right, then we're not so concerned about maximizing Amazon. But if someone can sell books worldwide, then we definitely want all three of those modalities available to prospective readers. Because, and I made this mistake uh, early on, is I was publishing print and audio. And then I thought, well, I don't really like print. Right. I'm just an ebook person. And so I just published ebooks and I had several people say I would read it, but I need a physical copy. And I went, oh, it's not about what I want and how I'm reading. It's about the reader. So, of course, I needed to make that mistake so I could pass it on and help <laughs> other people not to make it. Right. But then audiobooks are a, are a fast growing segment of publishing. And so if you can have the audiobook and if you can't have it right away, 
then just do the ebook and the paperback version. Those are the fastest and least expensive options to do. And then you can save your pennies, your dimes, and your quarters for producing an audiobook at some point. So you can get that out as well. And so then you have it in all different formats. And what I like to do is if I discover a book that I really like on audio, I go by the print book because I like to sit and read it and highlight it. And that's my style. And if I get a book that I like in print and I read it with a highlighter, then I wanna listen to it to reinforce the message. And so I'm a dual modality person when it comes to reading. And so I think if, if there's one, if I'm one person I represent that, then there have to be many, right? There must be many, there, must, there might be many readers that do that same exact thing, right? So, so you have to think about how does your reader uh, ingest their knowledge and give them a book in in the format that would work best for them. Very true. Yeah. When I was working in the corporate world all the time, uh, it was audiobooks because I had an hour's drive. So audiobooks all the time. Yep. 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 And so then you asked a question about just Amazon, but actually um, indie publishing now has no barriers to entry. So it used to be if you wanted to have bookstore distribution or independent bookstore distribution or even airport distribution, you had to go through a traditional publisher. And that is actually not the case anymore. I have an author we published in September. His book is Prepare for Medicare. It's for anyone in the U.S. who's over the age of 65 and wants to solve the mystery of Medicare, which we did a really good job. <laughs> I think I actually I actually did my homework and figured out what plan I will need at some point. And he said I get an A plus. Um, so if I can do it, anyone can do it. But his book is in in uh, Walmart and Target and in his local bookstore and all through distribu distribution channels that are available. So di different distribution channels out there. So you can get your book out. You don't have to go through a traditional uh, publisher like the standard Correct. random house or whoever we used to use on that. You, there's many different ways. Right. That you can do. Yes, that's correct. Well, good. That is good to know. So you don't have to have like a book signing where somebody has to, you have to go out there and get a publisher and that has to have a, you know, a manuscript in their hand or, or what you see, like we used to see in the old days. That's right. Well, traditional publishing still exists, and they're doing a great job of setting the standard for those of us that are indie publishers and want to make sure that we have our books right alongside theirs in those bookstores and on, on those bookseller uh, retail sites, and then people will buy them. And then as indie authors, we make more than if you go through a traditional publishing house, unless you're a big time author and you sell lots and lots and lots of books, right? You have to sell probably... Mm, oh gosh, 30 to 50 books through traditional publishing for the same as one, every one book um, in some instances um, in terms of income. So it's anything is possible now with independent publishing. And so you don't have to have a book proposal done. I have a, several ghostwriters that I work with who still work through traditional publishing and they will charge 30 to $50,000 for a book proposal. Wow. And then on top of that, the ghostwriting fee. Oh, yes, it's quite it's quite significant. And so you have to really do well um, in order to do well in traditional publishing. So it's very open to indie um, authors and aspiring authors. My, my caution and my advice is to just do it as professionally as you possibly can. Take the time to invest the money that needs to be made to create a quality product, which is what those traditional publishers are doing is they have those folks on staff that you need to publish a book professionally. So you have to take the time it takes and invest the money that it takes in order to do it well. But if you do, then that big 10 year long picture I was talking about, you can have a book that's still making money for you and generating new business for you a decade from now. And that means that anything that you spent on the book, frankly, is a rounding error, right? It's just like, oh gosh, it was inconsequential compared to what I have brought in to to my business over time. Very good point. I love that. Uh, Andre, how do people get a hold of you if they want to learn more? Um, you can go to my website, honorequarter.com. Um, and on that front page, there is a, uh, on that landing page of my website, that first page is a free copy of my book, You Must Write a Book. So you can get that in digital format and see if it, um, makes you want to write your book and get it out into the world. I hope it does.
Perfect. Andre, I really appreciate your time today. Appreciate your time today. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating what you've done. Thank you very kindly. Thank you so much, Gregory. Great to be here.